Well, here's the latest project out in the garage. Um, this little go-kart I picked up about a year ago. Um, you subscribers, you probably saw the uh, drift trike that we did last year around Christmas for my nephew. Well, when I was looking for parts to build that, uh, I came across this. I paid 75 bucks for it and it came as you see it. Uh, somebody has taken a bunch of parts off of it. It looks like it's pretty much all there and uh, Hopefully I'll be able to get it put back together reasonably easy. Um, I really haven't done anything with it. I've had it out in the barn for a year and uh, just kept putting it off, putting it off. And, uh, you know, one of them winter projects, well, it's winter time. So I'm going to go ahead and start digging on this thing and I will update you as we go. All right, here's your first update, and um, I got good news and bad news. The good news is we got spark. Bad news is we got zero compression. Um, so how I checked the spark was put the cover back on with the recoil starter. That that recoil starter is working just fine. Um, I pulled it a few times, and I'm getting spark, which is great. Uh, check the uh, on and off switch. Uh, it's working properly. Uh, when it's in the on position, I'm getting spark. When it's in the off position, I'm not. Uh, basically how that works is if you follow this ratty old nasty wire from that switch to under this cover, uh, it grounds out the coil. So uh, when you flip it to off, that switch is uh, closing the circuit to ground. So that's essentially that's how a lot of these uh, little engines work. When you shut them off, flip that switch off, it grounds out the coil and it doesn't produce a spark then. So that's good. We got uh, good spark and everything. I put my finger over the... Uh, the hole here then to feel if we got any compression we have zero compression and in looking in there I'm gonna try to show you just through the spark plug hole you'll be able to see I think what I can see so when I'm pulling the recoil starter there's your piston going up and down now we're just doing a real crude diagnosing here so when we look in this way I'm gonna try to see if you can see what I'm seeing and get you a good angle here Okay, so we see that valve going up and down. That valve is the exhaust valve. We can see that just on the other side of that valve is the muffler. Now we wanna look over here, this way, toward the carburetor side, and we're gonna see if the intake valve is moving. Let's look down in the hole here. There's the lip of the valve, we can just see it. Okay, we can see the piston going up and down. But we can see that the intake valve is stuck open. So that's why we're not getting any compression. So next step is going to be probably multi-part step here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and remove the carburetor because it's going to need to be cleaned up. Anyhow, it's been sitting forever. The tank still has some fluid in it. I don't know if I'd call it gas or not because it's, I'm sure, nasty stuff in there. So I'm going to have to dump that, I'm going to have to clean out the carburetor, and I want to see if I can, I don't know if I'll be able to see that valve stem or not. It may be, if I can see that valve stem, that'd be great. So I want to look in there and see if I can see that too. And uh, if I can get the, uh, if I can get a, maybe some WD-40 in on that valve stem, hopefully it'll loosen up. I doubt it. Probably going to have to pull the head off and uh, give, the, give that valve a few lub taps, but we'll... Uh, Take it a step at a time here. First thing is gonna be remove the carburetor and tank, and we'll go from there. All right, well, here's your update. Uh, I got the uh, tank and carburetor off and dumped everything out into this, uh, it was a clean Cool Whip bowl, brand new. And so you can see how much crap was floating around in that tank. Uh, also, yesterday when I quit, today's the next day. Uh, yesterday when I quit, I went ahead and sprayed uh, from the from the uh, spark plug hole here. I sprayed some WD-40 down uh, As much as I could under that valve try to let it kind of soak down and you can see after I removed the carburetor um, Also removed that cover there. I don't know what you want to call that cover exactly, but um, it exposes the valves now so you can see um, You can see the valve stem coming up through here and like I said, I soaked that with WD-40 from the top yesterday hoping that it would you know maybe help uh, lubricate that and get it unstuck you can see how this works here um, 
you know, as I'm pulling the recoil starter, you can see that I guess those, I think it's called a tappet, the little things that ride on the cam in there that come up and they work against the, uh, uh, the valve stem. You can see that I'm guessing that while this was sitting over time, that, that, that uh, the uh, intake valve must have been at full extension because I'm not getting any resistance at all when I'm rolling this over. So I'm guessing that intake valve was open as far as it'll go. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm simply gonna take a screwdriver and I'm gonna pry up against that and see if I can get this thing broke loose. Just shove that in there. Some movement. Now it's not going to come back down. All right, well, here we are the next day again, and uh, got the uh, carburetor and tank uh, put back on the, the engine now. I had it off on the bench, and I separated the carburetor from the tank and uh, cleaned up. There's a couple of screens. So I cleaned both those screens, sprayed. Uh, I don't use carburetor cleaner anymore. Seems like I just use brake parts cleaner. I think the kind of the active ingredient in both of them is acetone. Um, so I just sprayed brake parts cleaner. In throughout all the orifices, I took that plate off the side there. Oh, damn, that muffler's hot. I had it running just a second ago. I'm going to show you. Um, I took that plate off the side of there. Um, there is a, uh, a diaphragm in here. The diaphragm looked good. I cleaned everything out. There was a little bit of crud in there. Uh, looks like, I'm guessing that's some kind of fuel pump because uh, there's a little spring and uh, a cap that rides against that diaphragm. But it, it looked real good. didn't look stretched out or ripped or anything. So I put it all back together. And that was it. I put the thing back together. Um, and I'm happy to report that that muffler is hot. So let's see, uh, see if I can get it to fire up for you. I adjusted the idle screw just a little bit, but that's the only adjustment I've made on this thing. So um, you can see that that wheel is going even at idle. But put, a little, put a little bit of tension on it and it'll stop. So, um, I got, of course, I got it up on jack stands now, which is kind of sketchy, but I'm going to go ahead now and uh, let's start messing with, with the, uh, the throttle cable here. Well, fortunately, I didn't have to get real creative on this uh, throttle cable. Uh, I found one that was just, just about exactly what I need. Um, it was a scavenged part off of a lawnmower. Um, I tend to keep crap around here. This one's so kinked up and everything. It was going to be a real bear. Uh, it's kind of broken the outer jacket. Um, it was going to be a real bear to get it to work. The cable's so frayed on both ends. I went rummaging around in my uh, spare parts section over here and uh, I try to scavenge parts off of uh, mowers or if I find throttle cables or whatever, you know, shit cheap at a flea market or a yard sale or whatever, I try to pick them up for a buck or two. And so all I really had to do was just bolt the new one on. Um, down here, the, uh, I guess the old one somehow bolted on because uh, that bolt was still in there. So I took the bolt out of the hole. I had to drill, uh, hell, I don't even know what size it is, a little bitty tiny hole. Um, and the old one was this, uh, was a cable, was a throttle cable. This one uses the wire, which I kind of like this one better. Um, it doesn't have that plastic jacket on it. And this one I'm able to, uh, with these kind, you can oil them from the outside. So like this one was a little bit stiff from being on the shelf for God knows how long and it had been used on something green apparently. Um, but I just, I sprayed WD-40 down the whole length of this thing and just kind of massaged it and, and, and bent it back and forth and worked the wire in and out and it loosened right up. So now we've got, uh, as I push on the pedal here it's got good recoil it's got a good spring on the back here you can see it's working the linkage perfectly so i think we're in real good shape there um next thing is going to be figuring out how to bolt this seat on and uh, i think that's going to be real simple so i'll catch you guys up here in a bit
Uh, before I bolt the seat on, I guess I should mention, I didn't have to mess with the brakes. Um, they, they seem a little bit kind of crude, but I think they're going to work. They seem like they're grabbing. Uh, might have a little bit of metal on metal friction there, but we'll see how it works uh, to test this thing out. So I'm not going to mess with the brakes for now. I'm going to go get that seat mounted on though. Today is two days later. Anyhow, uh, I got back out here. I think everything was all buttoned up on the engine for the most part except the air filter. I just mounted the uh, seat back on with a couple of quarter 20 bolts. I went around with a can of, of uh, WD-40 and just hosed down all the joints and stuff, try to get this thing from sticking so bad on everything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I, I think everything's here for the air filter, uh, and actually the air filter don't look terrible, so I'm going to throw that all back together, stick it on there, and I'm going to see if I can get this thing, uh, maybe a test drive in. So um, I went ahead and lubed up the uh, this throttle uh, line again, so it's working real smooth, I and mean, it's got a good rebound on the pedal and everything. Um, the travel looks like it's just right on the, on the uh, linkage and everything back here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing off the jack stands, put that air filter on there, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, guys, well, I pushed it outside, and I blew all the dirt off of it and stuff, and uh, I actually did start it up and ride it around here a minute, but um, the clutch is doing something really funny. I think it needs oiled up. I'm going to show you what it's doing. Um, it's grabbing. It makes a real loud, like, sounds like it's vibrating, like a chatter sound, and... Uh, I'm almost certain it's just, it needs oiled. Hopefully it's not completely worn out, but I'm gonna pull it here and uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear what it sounds like. There we go, right there. Um, and when it does that, it makes that noise, it engages and it and wants to take off and kill the engine. So I'm gonna get my oil can and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix this. Okay, so my clutch is gonna be a little different than most clutches, uh, just because this has got a belt pulley on it. Um, where you know most of them just have a little chain sprocket but essentially it's the same thing there should be like a bronze bushing in here um, you can see where the outside of the clutch is moving and the inside is not so we want to try to get oil in this groove right here so I'm simply gonna take my oil can and I'm gonna oil this up really well out through here I maybe roll it around a little bit Oil it again, and this oil that I'm using here, I'm sure you could use just about anything you got on hand. I don't even know what's in this can, to be honest with you. It's either gear oil or 10W30. All right, so I got a rag, and I clean that off as good as it's going to get, uh, just simply because that's going to be flinging up on me if I go riding this thing again. And uh, also, I don't want it getting all over the belt. So let's see if we fix the problem here. If this thing will start. Looks good, sounds good. Uh, this thing was was running so poorly that that thing would have uh, it would have done it by now if it was going to do it. So pretty happy with that. Well, here we go. It's pretty late out here, so I'm going to make this quick. We're going to take a little test drive. Test drive successful. Well, there it is, guys. You saw the test ride. Went pretty good. Uh, that was a short little test ride, but I did ride it around for another 10 or 15 minutes. Didn't have any issues at all out of it. Uh, the brakes work really good. Engine runs great. Um, the only thing that I'm sure you noticed was the belt chirps just a little bit when I'm at a dead stop and I punch it. Uh, belt chirps just, just a bit until it gets me uh, moving. And once I'm rolling, then it, it's fine, but... I think that's just simply, you know, my weight. I weigh about 220 pounds, so I'm pretty big for this thing. Other than that, it worked awesome. 
All right, guys, that was about a week ago, I guess, that I got that uh, go-kart running, and I put it for sale on uh, Facebook Marketplace, put it for uh, $300 or trade for a mini bike, and had a few offers of different mini bikes. Some of them were pretty rough. Um, but this one here, uh, this one come from a guy. He uh, he was looking for a go-kart for his, his daughter, so he wanted a little bit of the short one. He said the little go-karts are harder to find. Um, I traded him that go-kart and a uh, sump pump. I got a whole bunch of brand new sump pumps uh, that I've got for sale. And uh, so he, he does, uh, I guess, uh, some construction work. And he said occasionally he uses sump pumps just like that um, to clear water out of, out of his way. So it was kind of an odd trade, a go-kart and a sump pump for this thing. This is a 212, I guess that's CC's. Um, it's a Predator engine. I guess that's the, I think that's the brand they sell at Harbor Freight. Um, Megamoto is the brand on this thing. It's got a suspension on the front and hydraulic disc brake on the back. I've never seen a mini bike with that. This thing flies. Um, it starts right up. It's got very, very little time on it. I mean, heck, it's it's kind of dirty from sitting, but it's got all the warning stickers still on it. Um, he said he just bought this thing like six or seven months ago. His wife rode it around the yard a little bit, and uh, then she decided she didn't like it, and his kids don't like it, so it's been sitting in his garage, and uh, I'm tickled to death to get it. So I've rode it around. Oh, I've only had it for three days. I've rode it around twice now already. Um, so anyhow, that's what, uh, you know, tinkering around with that go-kart turned into a really nice little mini bike. So, you know, it's worth learning how to tinker on stuff and fix your own stuff out in the garage because that's a pretty sweet deal. So, yeah, uh, hopefully you guys uh, liked this video. If you did, click that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, me working on all kinds of stuff, I got to uh, I gotta do my annual service on that uh, Kubota. That's an MX5200. That might be the next video I post. Uh, it needs oil change, hydraulic change, you know, everything, complete service on it. So uh, click that subscribe button. You get to see that. And until the next video, guys, keep on tinkering.